I have two beautiful bobcat hides that I had caught this season and today I want to show you exactly how I put up bobcats in my fur room. Okay trappers, I, I want to go and work on my first bobcat. I want to talk about a little bit uh, that's important. I wash my coyote fur. Um, I do a lot of tumbling a different fur, but with bobcats I take them just as they come. Uh, I make sure there's no, I feel there to make sure there's no cockle burrs, anything like that. We don't want to disrupt the, the fur, but after we skin the, cut, the bobcat, we got to remember that with cats, it's very easy for you to have fur falling out. So we want to talk, we want to go ahead, get that animal skinned out as fast as we can. I, I generally leave the legs wrong, uh, long, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hopefully they're not wrong, uh, long, and uh, that's for presentation. I don't know how much they really use, but I tell you, if you end up getting these tanned, you'll want to have a long leg just for that. Now, we don't want to go too crazy with bobcats. I don't want to, I'm not worried about getting all uh, uh, of this back off of them. I'm worried about taking off the big stuff. I want. I, this is a very delicate fur article. So let's go ahead and just be real easy with what we got. I'm putting it on my flesh and bean. And like I said, we got two of them. I want to go and clean this head up just in case I choose to go ahead and get a tan. I want to do that anyway to help preserve it. But um, most of the time, my animals are for sale for fur articles. The head is really normally worthless. Uh, they're going to cut the head off. They'll use the rest of the skin, primarily the belly. So let's go ahead and uh, grab our double-edged knife. And I'm going to go ahead and use the sharp side of my double-edged knife up here around the head. I don't really want to go crazy on the other part, but I think we can get some of that. And just making some easy strokes up here to get some of that heavier uh, muscle tissue. Not really too much fat. Then we go and push it with the flat side. There we go. And we'll do a little bit more. Always make sure your skin is tight on the flesh and board. Not bad. Let's work on the other side of the head. It will certainly make I do turn my hides. Now with bobcats, I don't want to wait too long. They'll be very much too hard to turn if I wait too long. There's a couple of things I've heard that I haven't done. Let me go and get this guy done here. I ought to put a nail on the end of my board here for that. That would help me out greatly. I used to have a bigger belly and it used to hold it down. <laughs> Not anymore. Just gentle slicing. I could go a lot harder than I'm going. But I'm just getting some of that sinew off. There we go. There we go. I'm going to turn the high. Keep the work in the middle of the board. Let's repeat the process. There we go. I'm not too worried about the nose too much. I'm going to have a hard, I'm going to kind of just brush it a little bit, but I would have a hard time holding it on there. All right. So there, I have that. I might get a kind of bump it a little bit of that to the side. Let's just go ahead with this. I'll grab my weedy replaceable blade. And uh, I'm just going to knife off this sinew. Just being careful not to cut into the height. And get the big stuff off. Some of the cartilage I take off right now, but not really. I'm not really taking out cartilage on the ears, like I said. I don't really sell my hides to go for taxidermy or tanning uh, for the for the benefit of a wall hanging. But I just took off that little bit around that ear, made it look a lot better. 
Uh, it'll dry a lot better around the ear. Same thing here. I do a lot, a lot of knifing around ears, and that's you know, and just anything I just really don't get. It takes just a couple of seconds, maybe a minute. I don't know. It takes whatever time it takes, and. Uh, There we go. So I have that head much more cleaned up. I want to go ahead here now and I'm going to gently, and I always take my hand and I feel it to make sure I don't feel any bumps. I'm not going to be aggressive with this. Let's rotate it. Really nothing there. Right here under the armpits on Bobcats is our primary spot. Right there, the saddle. That's the word I was looking for. Rotate it again. Keep your work in the center. You can see them spots. I don't want to go too aggressive here because the spots, that's our money there, the belly. So go as gently as you can. But we still need to get this little fat deposits out of it. I'm going to rotate it again. And like I said, I don't wash my bobcats. I think you can do more damage to your fur. I'll leave that up for the, for the companies to deal with that. There we go. Bobcats has got to be about just about as easy as doing a uh, muskrat. There really ain't a lot of fleshing on them. If I dug down here, I'm just going to go and get the belly. Done, I have a little, little fat down there. That way my belly's pretty much done. Just in case I forget it too. There we go, let's rotate it. So there we're up by our arm again. Getting that little fat off of there. Don't be afraid of this stuff. Um, if you've never, if you've never uh, fleshed anything in your life, right now, and I'm not trying to say that raccoons are less valuable than bobcats or coyotes, but for the value in the fur, try putting up some raccoon. Start getting some practice. Uh, if you, when you start getting good at raccoon, it's easier to step off to your lighter skins like bobcat like coyote, things like that. This is far more, far more uh, tender than say a coyote fur would be. I can be a lot harder on a coyote than I can on the other, on, on, than I can on a cat. So that some of the saddle doesn't really want to come off and I'm not going to worry about it. I'm, I, I, I can go, I can do far more damage to the cat by insisting on a clean, on a perfectly clean pellet. I don't need to worry about it. it there, it's about the fat underneath of it. So we have a little saddle here. Let me see what I can do. If it comes off, great. Yep, it's coming off. Take, take what, you get, what it gives you. Rotating it again, bringing the work back up to me. And I've just about got what wants to come. Rotating it back. We get down to this point and it doesn't want to come off. Instead of me doing too much, I'll probably knife off a lot of this when I go to board it, or I could do it right now. It's a little dry around there. That's a little freezer dry, but it'll be all right. And one more rotation and I about got this cat. That's how easy a cat is. 
Make sure there's no meat still stuck from the skinning around the animal. The tail looks nice and clean. I really don't have anything between the tail. Kind of loosen that muscle up. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, use my knife. And let's go ahead and get this cat kind of some of that sinew off of there. It, it was it's not much. I might work on that a little bit more with my knife. Okay. She I got that, there was a little chunk there, and I just wanted to make sure I got it. There we go. There we go. I have, that's one bobcat done. I'm going to set this to the side. I'll grab the second bobcat. That's a nice cat. Much longer fur. Much longer fur. You can tell I caught this cat a little later in season. Now these have to have a CITES tag, a CITES tag, whatever your vernacular is, C-I-T-E-S, I believe is the spelling or the acronym, and um, there we go, my legs are out, let's repeat the process on the second tom cap, this is, a, yeah, this one was definitely a tom. I know if I put like a roof and nail on the very end, that would help me on that. Just kind of using the sharp side here of my knife, being gentle with it. Just up around the head. I'm not going to go crazy with this. And with bobcats, you do not want to wait till tomorrow to turn. You're, you, you're going to have a very hard, they're going to dry very fast. They're going to be very hard and difficult to, to turn. This is a scenario where I'm going to come back out later. And turn this high. But I need to dry it with the skin side out for a few hours. There we go. While I have it on this angle, I'm going to go ahead and scrape a little bit around the neck. That looks pretty good. There's really nothing there. Let me rotate it back and kind of clean up my ears a little bit. Now, folks, for those of you that don't know, this is not tanning. I'm not tanning the hide. The process is, in order for me to sell my hide, to get the most amount of money for it, is I need to flesh it. I don't want to call it stretching, but it's on a stretcher. I'm only, I'm, that's only to get the, the product dry, and I actually will hang it on a stretcher uh, until the hide is dry. Then it will keep in my shop without refrigeration until I'm ready to sell it or send it off to be tan, whatever along that line. This is just the first process in several processes before you either make a fur garment or make a wall hanging. This is just the first stage. There we go, kind of got that. There we are. Looking pretty good. I want to go ahead and do this side while they have it. Make sure it's taut. It's smooth. Really not much there. All right, let's turn it around. Let's go ahead and knife off them ears, being careful we don't cut into the hide. Very good, I got it done. Question come up to me is what do I do if I cut into the hide? That's kind of common. Well, just get some needle and thread. Um, 
I like to use a veterinary needle. I think uh, is what some people call it, or an upholstery needle. It's got kind of a half moon configuration to it, and I just simply uh, take some upholstery thread and I sew it up. Some guys use uh, uh, the fishing uh, 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 strength called spider wire, something like that. Some people use monofilament, but you want to sew it up while it's still while it's still green. All right. Let's get to the back of this bobcat. Okay, let me pull it up. Don't get too much to where you're leaning all the way down. Stay, stay in a comfortable work zone. Now we're starting to get into that saddle area and around the, uh, you see this little fat right there on the inner part of the leg, that's common. We want to take care of that. It's very important that dries properly. There we go. Being gentle, especially on female cats. You hit it, you, you can, you hit a T, and you can run into some problems. There we go, being careful. Let's go to the other side, keep rotating it. I maybe went down a little too fast, let me back it up. Yep, there's some. Get that on there. Again, don't be too aggressive. I think I said that about five times already. But. There we go. This hide, it's a little dry there on the belly, so I gotta be careful. I'll go ahead and rotate this around. Keep your, there we go. If you got to work real hard at a bobcat, you probably need to stop. Some of that saddle's coming off of that old Tom. There we go. Rotate it a little more. Just keep, keep being gentle, keep working it around. Get that fat off. Okay. Excuse me. Tell it was dusty where I was at. The dust is just flying off of this. It's like I got it, like I'm testing them for wind direction in here. There we go. Let me go and buy some of this. I feel like I'm, put, I'm starting to put in a lot of pressure, and I don't need to do that. So I'm going to knife a lot of this saddle off, being sure to be easy with it. I think I've got it. 
Then we go right in here and kind of work the bottom edge. At least I have some meat. I'll call them back in a minute. Let's go ahead here. There we go. Normally I have this braced against a wall, so you have to forgive me. It's moving a little bit. There we go. There's a little fat right there. Let's get rid of that. I feel pretty good about it. I think I got it. Let's go ahead and go on, move on into boarding. So the way I'm going to board my Bobcats is I'm going to use a solid board. I like the way the presentation of the Bobcat looks. I have a smaller Bobcat and I have a larger Bobcat. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, position one cat. Uh, I don't have, I'm using a smaller raccoon board for this one because the dimensions or right right along with that with the uh, the Bobcat Otter board is what this one is that's an actual Bobcat Otter board normally I don't catch a terrible amount of Bobcats in a season if I catch them I catch them wonderful I can space them out and use just a couple boards the smaller ones I found I can use just a smaller medium sized raccoon board and get along just fine so let's get this process going first thing I want to do is, is as always we want to put the front legs on one side and the back legs on the other uh, or the tail on the other have it lined up and centered so we're going to shift this bobcat around a little bit shift it around and pull it on down very good and i'll do a little knifing here when we get done Make sure I have enough room, and I do. It's perfect. So let's go ahead on the back side of our board, and I'm going to give it a little more tug. Now with Bobcats, we're going to use a lot of a lot of pins. The way I the way I've been taught, Rich Thurman was the guy who originally taught me. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stick one pin here in the tail just to kind of hold that side now don't forget we have to use a belly board on these or we're going to be very disappointed we don't want to have that so again making sure that the cat i'll go ahead and i'll bring the camera a little closer and we're going to go and pin this rascal up okay we have our work in front of you now i can see the spots on this cat and I'm going to end this, and they are not lining up. They're kind of currently going on a diagonal direction. So I need to rotate this a little bit. So I'm going to remove that pin for the time being because I want to have this straight. And I want the, I want the spots where the spots need to belong because that's on the belly. There, I think I have it there. We'll certainly know the truth when I go to turn it, won't we? Same thing here, pulling those down. I think I got it right there. That's, I have the spots in the center of the belly. I'm gonna re-stretch my back. I don't need a lot, of, I don't, don't overstretch. I'm just holding some tension on this. The next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is stick in my belly board, and I'm gonna stick this all the way through past the nose. There we go. Get it down a little farther. I want it right about the tip where I'm going to start joining these together. Now what I'll do here is I'm going to start putting in my pins and I'm going to alternate. Left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, and I'm going to keep them in the center with the, I don't want to have any flap. Let's repeat the process on the other leg. This way the pins aren't right next to each other. They're, they're close. I'm going to take my gloves off. I just don't have a good feel for the, the skin and the pin. But if you watch my video, I don't do well with gloves. 
All right, next leg. Let's keep bringing it in. And what I'm looking for is I want this leg nice and straight, having the spots of the hind leg touching the spots of the other hind leg. I'm gonna go and give myself a few here just to kind of hold that into position. There we go. Now I'll continue on. And again, we're gonna keep this, this stretch here. All right, so I'm gonna keep on working my way down, alternating my leg, making sure I'll go ahead and cheat this one on down and put it right beside the other foot. Because what I wanna do here is I want a presentation of, <laughs> I got my leg got my glove caught in it. I want a presentation of all white and spots. There we go. And again, just fill in that gap. We're, we don't want, I, I personally don't want to see a gap between the, the legs. Keep them in position. There we go. The middle is done now. Now let me go ahead and pull down this outside of the leg. And let's repeat on the other side. This is for your fur buyer. You're going to give your, your fur the very best presentation that you can. When he takes a look at it, he, he probably ain't going to go, ooh, ah, oh, well, look how great of a job. You did. That isn't really what they're doing. They need to see what are they buying. And they're buying those spots is what they're buying. Let's not be too wrapped up about the quality of our work in that regards of what a Superman we are. We are focusing on getting these. Uh, I got a little bit of a slit from where I cut it when knifing. So I'm just going to pin that one together. But I'll go ahead and pin it on the other side. So now I have that done. I'll pull it down here and I'm just going to square up the back. I don't have to do anything too fancy, just make sure that the skin dries. I prefer mine to be straight across. I don't, I'm not overstretching the, the fur here. Same thing with the other side. This side's a little drier, so it's wanting to ride up. That's okay. It's not that measurable. Get a pin over here. And maybe one more in, the, to, in between the two of them. All I'm trying to do is get this to dry. I have that done. I'm going to go ahead and put another pin in my tail on each side so it dries properly. Don't go crazy here. All I'm trying to do is make sure that then my split tail dries. That's good enough. I don't have to go crazy with it. The only thing left I have to do is these legs. I certainly do not use coat hangers. I want to get this bobcat's legs stood up. In the air, so I, what these are is plastic coat hangers that I'll pop out when I'm done, when I'm ready to rotate the hide. This is to keep it out so that this way the cat itself, the inside of the legs here, can dry properly. And I do the same thing with my coyotes. This cat is done, it's ready to go. Let's get the other uh, bobcat boarded. Okay, let's go ahead and get this cat put on my board here and then we'll put it on the table where you can see a little bit better. There we go. If I had a camera person, this would come out just right. All right, 
Now I'm just making sure the head, I'm making sure the head is straight and the belly is straight. Now something I didn't mention is I don't need, I don't need this bottom lip here on the cat. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that bottom lip off. It's not needed for fur sales. So that's just not needed. All right. So going, going back and making sure that my spots are where the spots should be. Pulling on this hide. I'll go ahead on this side and pull that cat tail down. Make sure there's, there we go. And I'll stick a pin in it. There we go. Now we'll go to the other side. Now, grab my, grab my belly board. Why do I go ahead, the question, is going to come up why do I stick the, the belly board all the way through past the the mouth of the animal I, I have a simple explanation behind that and the primary one is is when I'm ready to break this free I can just pop this that belly board I can just set this on the ground and it'll break the seal that may occur especially on the skin side there we go very good there's a leg. I can pull the belly board. This one's long enough. This is a big cat. I'll pull that belly board down on this one. Okay. So, let's go ahead and pin these legs down to, to the center to where this, let me get this, this is a little dry down here. They're not, they're not going to use the legs anyway, folks. I'm just letting you know. This stuff is all scrap. It's a way to hold the hide while it's while it's drying that's the purpose <laughs> there is no real trim benefit of a uh, the leg don't overthink this stuff they're, they're interested in the belly Whoop. if it makes you feel better to do things different than me then by all means do it so i'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to start taking the hide, and I'm going to start joining them in the center. A little bit there. A little bit here. And just alternate this back and forth. When we get done... This is going to make a very beautiful presentation. Making sure there's no skin rolled over. You don't want to have the rolled over rolled over skin because that's not going to dry. That'll be an area that your hide slips. I think about got it. And we're going to repeat the process up the side legs. We're, this is for the purpose that we've helped the tannery by getting rid of much of that fat and sinew. Now, if, let's just say I found a clump of fat or something here. I can still go ahead and knife it wherever it is. Just following it up. There we go. Had a little rolled over right there. I think I got this. I got the bottom lip cut off. Let's go ahead on this side. And let's pin that straight. It takes a lot of pins to, to have this, to have the way this is going to look. I don't borax cats, they'll be, I just don't do it. 
I, this, you know, we all get into habits uh, by what our mentors showed us or the way we've learned. Well, in this case, this is the way my mentor showed me, Richard Thurman. So I pretty much do the same thing, and I probably forgot a lot of the stuff that he taught me. But that being what it is, let's go ahead here and open up this cattail so it can dry properly. There is a little market for bobcat tails if you got the good ones. They'll go ahead and use them. Whoop, I just knocked the pin out on the bottom. There we go. And get another one right in here. Again, don't overthink it. There we go. So now the only thing left for me to do is get these legs put out all right taking taking the clothes hanger stick it up the arm and we're going to push it against the against our board and kind of brace it there when this when this gets done it's going to look nice we just need this arm to to dry but what you don't want to do is let this over dry you're going to have a a heck of a time getting these legs uh switched over to the other side of the cat so we want to we want to be quick about this turning process there we go just got to adjust that a little more there we go i have my legs out the cat's ready to hang up and uh let the, and i have a gentle fan the temperature in my room is 62 degrees and I have a fan gently oscillating the air back and forth on low speed. I don't want to over dry. I just need them to, I just need it to dry a little bit. So looks good. We'll keep going here. 